Can anybody tell me? Or can I put some approximate value of this? First one to this state. You may write, okay, Xi1, 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 or just may write Xi1, doesn't matter, okay? This is called the density matrix, this is called the field. So what will be this one? So this is P1 is what? 1 minus 2 Xi square. Here you can say this is square root of square. So P2 is epsilon square. This is some square. You may take epsilon to be close to one. I mean less than one, close to zero. So what do you get here? So this is P1, this is P2, this is P3. And then one by P1 square plus P2 square plus P3 square, which will give you approximately one plus four epsilon square. So that means entanglement here is less than entanglement here. Although this has Smith number three, but here the Smith number two. Okay. Then the question is, why do I define this way? I can define something in a different way. For example, I have P1, P2, some PK, I can always define its canon entropy because P1, P2, PK, and some of this equal to one, that means it is a probability mass function. So I can define canon entropy. And then also this will be the maximum. And the question is when it is like this, one by K, P, P k equals one by K, uniform distribution. Question is, yeah, you can define it as many ways. This concept came from uh, a concept of which is called the uh, which is called the physicists call it uh, the, I think the participation ratio. So this is a concept from condensed matter physics. So it's called the participation ratio. So how many qubits are part? I mean two two states are participating because p one p two. So they are corresponding psi one psi one psi two psi two psi three psi three. So if it is only one p one. And rest are all zero, then it is separable. And if you are increasing, then they are participating with rest of some problem. So, so, so this concept can be used to define this. So it's called the participation risk. Participation risk. And this is from a concept from a condensed matter. Now the question is, as I said, you may define it differently. So now the question is, you may def if you define it differently, for different measures, although it is it is maybe the fix for maximum entanglement, but, but for other states, depending on your measure, the amount of entanglement may, entanglement may vary. Then the question is, which kind of a function, which is defined in terms of PI, can be considered as a measure of entanglement. And that's a bigger question. Because this, what you are defining here, this is a function of PI. Now, what I say initially is that because it is matching that this value is maximum only when it is PI is equal to 1 by K, that does not justify that this is a proper way of defining or uh, this is a proper measure to quantify entanglement. Okay. So then the question is, if I if I consider a measure of entanglement as a function, what are the properties of that function should be so that it can be considered as a measure of entanglement? Because there are going to be many functions which you can define, which will attain the va maximum value only for pi equal to k, or one by k. So I'm not going to that. So there is a formulation, but I'm not going to that. Because for that, I need to also define what is called the entanglement, I mean, the amount of entanglement and entanglement measure for density matrices as well. And then I can give a general definition that what is the measure of entanglement, not only for bipartite state, this is for bipartite state, but for any multipartite state. Okay. So then I can talk about a mathematical formulation like a function. If that function satisfies some properties, 
then I will be considering that function as a measure of entanglement. And then I will check whether this function satisfies all these properties or not. But here, whatever I'm defining, this function satisfies all those properties. But I'm not giving you a generalized definition. Okay. Because the generalized definition should be a definition which should not depend on the number of systems you are considering. It should be a multi system, any number of systems you are considering. And not only for pure states, it could be for also density matrix. So that is a total generalized setup, which I'm not, you, you can type it in Google and you can see that there's a lot of documents, I mean, a lot of research papers where people talk about this. And there are different notions of measure of open entanglement. Some people call it like geometric measure of entanglement, statistical measure of entanglement, so on. And there are a lot of measures. Okay. But everything can be unified by a de properly defining a function. And you can show if you can if you are able to show that those functions satisfy those properties, then that can be considered as a measure of entanglement. For example, one property I can tell you is it should be invariant under local operations. Now, local operations will not change the entanglement. So that could be one property, but there are others. Okay. And now what we'll do today is and I will ask you a question. The question is, okay, so we know that if I have a bipartite system, okay, if I have a bipartite system then I can define the reduced density matrices and I can measure observables of a subsystem. Okay, this is what we discussed. And we define that in terms of in terms of reduced density matrices. Right? So what I said earlier is if we have two systems, okay, and if you want to measure some observable correspond to this system, let's say this is the first system, this is the second system. So if there is an observable A1 corresponding to the first system, and if you want to measure that, we said, okay, then this, the expected value of this can be written as trace of this row one and A1. Row one is the reduced density matrix. This is a partial trace corresponding to the second. This is what we say. So then the question comes, if that is the case, then, there can be two things. One is every density matrix can be considered, or the question could be: Can every density matrix be? Considered? Oh, what is that? Yeah, no. So the question is now, here is the question. So earlier what you say and what you define? We define partial trace for a density matrix corresponding to a pure state. You can define the so partial trace corresponding to any density matrix, not a problem. But we define it this way. It can be general, similar way, because the definition is same. So we said that you take the partial trace over the second system and you get something called the row one. 